So this is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, and we're using Of the Land in Seasons. We're also blessing our devices. So if you have a cell phone with you or something like that, we're going to bless that, especially right now during this time. This is our connection with so many things. So uh, having Social Media Sunday now seems to be a very appropriate thing. So we're going to begin with our confession and assurance. And so every place where it's written in bold, I encourage you to use your inside voice and um, read along with me. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have squandered your bountiful gifts. We have considered the blessings of the harvest our due. We have been indifferent in planning and planting for the future needs of your church. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, cause gratitude to ripen in our hearts and wisdom to mature in our minds so that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So you can greet one another with just a wave or something like that. Um, and we're so blessed to have some amazing musicians and instrumentalists, uh, singers. So thank you so much to all of the people who are helping with our um, Of the Land and Seasons. Um, we have two cantors. The bulletin only indicates one. We have two cantors. It's Tim Smith and Nora Worthington. So we have two cantors. I also wanted to say thank you to Matthew Olmsted and Eric Stahl and uh, Jane Santoni Smith are also playing instruments for us this morning. It's always wonderful. And we have all the bell ringers. So can't even get into all that. They're, they'll be playing later too. So we'll sing Have No Fear, Little Flock. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So if you have a device, I encourage you to hold it in your hand. It's a little bit foggy, so you might not want to necessarily take it out entirely. You could wrap it, hold it close to you, but if you have a device with you, we're going to bless those devices. Each time and place has found new ways to share good news and ask for prayers and action. Especially during this pandemic, we feel more isolation. One of the ways we find connection right now when we live and work as the people of God is through our phones, tablets, and computers. If you have a cell phone or other device with you this morning, please hold it up as we offer this blessing. And please respond with me the parts in bold using your indoor voice. We hold in our hands these tools of connection. They ring and we answer. They buzz and we respond. For some of us, this is our calendar, our means of expressing ourselves, our way of reaching out or, and exploring our world and learning from others. We have more information at our fingertips than any generation in the history of the world. This is a weighty thing. Sometimes these possibilities excite us and bring joy to our lives, but sometimes they feel like a burden. We sometimes feel so small compared to so many. Some use their phones to encourage, but others use them to diminish and persecute. Keep us aware of the power of our words to bless or curse. We pray for our online devices, for the many roles they play, their connections to family, friends, and loved ones. We also recognize them as tools of our own service and ministry. 
Holy God, make our shared words thoughtful, our tweets respectful, our photos uplifting, and our posts challenging to those who receive them. Amen. And along those lines, I just wanted to remind you that since it is Social Media Sunday, if you would like to post something about this worship, if you want to take a picture and share it, just use hashtag SMS Social Media Sunday 20, um, and that will be a way to share some good news with others in the community. And now we continue with the Kyrie. Please hum along. Let us pray together. God of dreams and hope, you spoke to Joseph in his dreams, and those dreams led him to great danger. Yet you used the challenges in his life to share the lives of others. In you, no good thing is accidental. You work in us and through us, even when we are not aware of your presence. Help us to know that you are with us and that only you are capable of turning all evil to good. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 25, verses 1 through 4. Um, just a quick reminder again, let's try to make sure we are distance like six feet away from each other. Um, your response is in bold. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. And now we're going to sing the next song. I remind you, if you have a percussion instrument and it sounds like a song you want to join in, play along.
first reading is from Genesis chapter 37, verses 3 to 8, 17 to 8, 22, 26 to 34, and 15 from 15 to 21. The dreams of one brother to rule over the others prompted the time of enslavement and lies. Later, the realization that Joseph's dream, that Joseph's dream had come true brought terror to the other brothers, when they imagined it was time for revenge. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his own age, and he had made him a long road with sleep. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all of his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Once Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. And said that he said to them, Listen to this dream that I dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Suddenly my sheep rose and stood upright. Then your sheep gathered around it and bowed down to my sheep. His brothers said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to him, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes the dreamer, come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dream. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of the hand, saying, Let us not take his blood. Reuben said to them, Shed your blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hands and restore him to his father. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it to kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him for the Ishmaelites, and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some midnight traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifted him out of the pit, and sold him to the Israelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the pit, he saw that Joseph was not in the pit. He tore his clothes. He returned to his brothers and said, The boy is gone, and I, where can I turn? Then they took Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, dipped the robe in the blood. They had the long robe with sleeves taken to their father, and they said, This we have found. See now whether it is your son's robe or not. He recognized it and said, It is my son's robe. A wild animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I gave you. Forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of your servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. So Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though he intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is going to get. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. So I would love to stand up here and, and just give the most uplifting sermon of affirmation about how we are so wonderful at loving each other fully and living peacefully in a community the way God intended and that we are taking such good care of God's creation. I wish I could say, everything is awesome. We've accomplished God's command for justice and peace and love for all people. But saying that doesn't make it any more true than telling you that it's not sort of raining right now. 
It's not supposed to be, but there's a little bit of something. It reminds me of the prophet Jeremiah who had to say the truth. And he implicated the people who treated God's people carelessly by saying, peace, peace, when there was no peace. It seems like each week I'm aware of more and more divisions in our nation. We are broken regarding our response to COVID-19. We are broken into political parties and uncompromising ideologies. We are broken by inequality and racial injustice. And on top of all of that division, we are still living through economic turmoil and this ongoing pandemic. 2020 is tough. What could the Bible possibly tell us about our current situation? Well, the story that we just heard about Joseph and his brothers can shed some light because it's a story about divisions. Brother turns against brother. Money is deemed more important and valuable than human life. And privilege destroys a family. The story from about 3,500 years ago has a lot to say about the world today, a world that a colleague described to me recently as full of disequilibrium. It's a word that means loss of stability, like we don't even know where we are. We're questioning the stability of our nation due to the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, due to the verdict that no one is charged with the death of Breonna Taylor, due to questions about a safe election and the divisions that are ongoing in Portland, Oregon. Of course, none of those specific topics come up in the Bible, right? But as people of faith, we do look to the Bible for guidance in how we should live our lives right here and right now, because we are in pain. There are divisions in the way people view what is going on, but I think we can all agree that we're in pain, that this is not good. All of our brokenness boils down to desires for power, jealousies, inequalities, and favoritism. And all of those are found in our lesson for today. In Genesis 37, it starts right off saying exactly what it is. In your face, favoritism, Israel, meaning Jacob, loved Joseph more than any other of his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a long robe with sleeves. Now, a modern equivalent of that might be if your dad gave you a t-shirt that said, you're my favorite, daddy's favorite. How could the other brothers find their dignity in that environment? How could Jacob set up a system that blatantly favored one son and dismissed the rest? The result of this favoritism was what we see in our lesson, jealousy and hatred and fear and murderous intent and self-esteem issues, and even, yes, human trafficking. Joseph has privilege that he doesn't even seem to see. He's clueless that him sharing his dreams of superiority might be hurtful and might sow seeds of resentment. Dysfunction and favoritism were already part of the, the family fabric. Before Genesis 37, though, Jacob's dad favored Jacob's brother, Esau. And Jacob was his mom's favorite. And that division led Jacob and his mother to trick Esau into giving up his birthright and his blessing. The ultimate power grab that divided two brothers. But Jacob didn't seem to learn anything from experiencing that. He went on to have a favorite wife, a favorite son. Instead of trying to love each of his children and his wives, as the unique individuals that they were. I mean, I feel sorry for those older brothers. I'm not gonna defend them though. I, I can't defend somebody who wants to try to kill another brother out of hatred and jealousy. But the story does remind us that there is a cost to being treated as less than again and again and again. And it's not too terribly difficult to see that the unrest in our country is facing um, has something to do with our roots of treating some people like the, they are less than, especially regarding housing, education, job opportunities, police, prisons. Joseph had a dream that he was better than his family. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream that people could be equal, regardless of race or faith. We all know which dream brings more healing. We understand Joseph's story because it's so close to our own story. And the thing is, we're still living our story. This is our narrative, and we can change the plot. 
I wonder how things would have been different if, in Joseph's story if he had just gone to his brothers and listened and considered their point of view and responded kindly. I wish that we too could listen better to each other about the various points of view that we have and find ways to build bridges more than divisions. But at the end of today's lesson, it seems like there was a real reckoning, sort of, a confession of doing wrong and, and offering some semblance of forgiveness. But I kind of wish Joseph would have owned up to his part in it just a little bit if he said, you intended to do harm for me, and I didn't treat you guys very well either when I was younger. But still, God made it good. No matter what divisions they had in the past, Joseph recognizes that God can take that and make horrible things into good things. And we pray that God can take our divisions that we face, all of the protests and uprisings and all of the shock and tears of weeks like this, and make something good out of it. And we know that we can play a part. We have a responsibility. I close with the words of our presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. As a church called to witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ, we must continue to listen deeply, to speak out about racial equity and inclusion, to respect and uplift the dignity and humanity of every person, and to join with others in organizing for change. In baptism, we have become part of the body of Christ, and in Christ there is no barrier between us. I pray that our Lord will use us and this moment to make this baptismal promise a reality in our lives and in this church. So be it. Amen. There's a few um, questions to consider. Um, just a, fav a lot of favoritism in the story. You can go through the different characters and look at the favoritism. And the second question is, the brothers lie in order to protect themselves. In what ways do you see people lying to avoid responsibility in our community? And maybe you can see that you've done this. Um, is it necessary or are there better ways to deal with those issues? We're going to continue with the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 10. It's not raining. It's not raining. <laughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now our prayers. After each petition, you'll hear, Lord, in your mercy, your response is, hear our prayer. Drawn together in person and online, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. In all the world, give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ, where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son took on all bodily life in our world, even to death. Preserve and keep your creation, O God. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn all nations toward life. Where our ways are unfair, give us new hearts and new spirits. Where sin permeates our cultures and institutions, change our minds and teach us to trust your authority. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for the safety of essential workers in our hospitals, stores, utility workers, and first responders. Bless and re protect those who are working for the common good. Be with individuals and families adjusting to this ongoing pandemic. Watch over those who protest for e equality and the police who watch over them. Open the ears of leaders so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the city of Baltimore and our online mission field, for our leaders, Donald, Larry, and Jack, and our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill. For those who seek healing through the 12-step programs usually offered in our coffee house. For our prayer partner, First Lutheran Church in Ewan, Michigan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our lives are yours, O oh God. 
Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, and spirit, especially this morning. We ask you to watch over Jack, Alice, Frankie, Judy, Doris, the Stahl family, Andy, Catherine, Dolores, David, Helen, Christine, Carol, Richard, Barbara, as well as Keith, Susan, William, Charles, Chantal, Kiever, Danielle, Russ, Cheryl, Mary, Penny, Bradley, Bill, Frank, T, Gary, Sonia, Norma, Marcia, Marcia, Helen, Ron, Jody and Audrey, Jay and family, Laura, and those we remember now silently in our hearts. Defend the lives and welfare of children who are abused or neglected, hungry or exploited, bullied or lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us, tax collectors and prostitutes, likely and unlikely, obedient and slow to learn. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then um, we would normally be passing the plate, which we're not doing during COVID. So there are lots of different ways people are already giving, either online or, or by text or um, just bringing offerings and putting them in the box. So all that information is there. And now we will have our offering song, Accept, O Lord, the Gifts We Bring. prayer let us pray gracious God you bless us with gifts of guidance new life growth and grace and fruitful labor except the first fruits of time and toil field and orchard we offer here bless and multiply these gifts to our nurture and the care of your creation for the sake of your son Jesus Christ our Lord amen, amen. the Lord be with you, with you. lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And before we go ahead, we're going to sing Holy, Holy. Good time for percussion. Thank you. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now we pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites us to this holy feast and all are welcome. You don't have to be a member of this congregation. You don't have to be a Lutheran. The gifts of God are free. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And now I invite you to open up the cellophane part to reveal the wafer or to open up your bag if you have gluten free. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. And then open up the foil portion, be careful. The blood of Christ shed for you, amen. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we give thanks for your pruning, planting, and nurture. We rejoice that you have used the harvest of field and vineyard to renew and sustain us. Lead us as we go from this life-giving meal into the lives of grateful service to you and your cherished creation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Um, just a reminder, we have lots of different mission kinds of things. If you're looking for some place to volunteer or some place to donate on our Facebook page and our website, just look for different ways that you can serve. The, the next one that's coming up is the collection of casseroles for Manna House this Friday. And now our commissioning, mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. And our ending song is, O Lord of the Blossom. Remember the poor.